Greetings fellow Dungeon Delvers and welcome to Dorans and Dragons, where we work together to come up with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition builds for your favorite League of Legends champions. Today we're building Victor, the Machine Herald. Victor is a Zonite with an obsession with the glorious evolution. He believes that by shedding weakness and emotion imposed by organics, humankind can reach its full potential. After being betrayed by his former professor, Victor took the final step and removed all parts of his flesh and psyche that were inhibited by emotion. First, let's cover the goals of this build. Victor is also known as the machinist and is a master inventor. We need to make sure the majority of his abilities come through his invention. Victor's Q ability is a shield and a powerful bolt attack. We'll cobble a few things together for this one, but it's easily doable. Next, Victor's W is a gravity field. Thankfully, those options opened up to us with Dunamancy. Victor's E ability is an AoE beam that strikes in a line. And finally, his ultimate ability, Chaos Storm, is an ability that can follow a target, dealing massive damage over time. Victor was once a human, but has forgotten those weak organics and augmented his entire body with Hex technology. As a result, we're going to go with Warforged as our race. Warforged gain a plus two to their constitution, and a plus one to a stat of their choice. We'll go with Intelligence for obvious reasons. Constructed Resilience is a racial trait that gives Warforged advantage on saving throws against being poisoned and resistance to poison damage. You don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. You're immune to disease, and you don't need to sleep, and you can't be put to sleep magically. Warforged also have Sentry's Rest, which lets you stay alert while you take a long rest. Integrated Protection is another Warforged feat. You gain plus one EC. Whenever you don armor, it integrates into your body, preventing its removal against your will. Man, Warforged have a ton of features, but here's the last one, Specialized Design. You gain proficiency in a skill and tool. We'll grab History for our skill, and Jeweler's Tools for our tool. Alright, time for the stat breakdown. As always, we're going to be using the standard array. If you'd like to roll, have a ball, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. For this build, you're going to need high charisma and high intelligence. Speaking of which, our highest stat is going to be intelligence. Victor is a Hextech genius and has continuously augmented his brain. This is, ironically, a no-brainer choice. Next, we'll grab Charisma. Victor is a passionate, emotionally charged man whose desire for the glorious evolution propels him forward. Convincing the people of his city to go along that path with him takes a lot of Charisma, and he's got it. Wisdom is next. The glorious evolution is a well-thought-out stratagem to slowly convert humanity into a more advanced version of itself. Constitution will be next. Our version of the ultimate ability will be a concentration spell, which a good con score will assist with maintaining in combat. Dexterity is going to be our 10 score. Victor does get a bit of movement speed from his Q, but in general he's not very mobile. And finally, we'll dump our strength. It's not really a stat you'll be worrying about. The only equipment you'll specifically need for this build is a quarter staff. We'll convert that to the hex core later on in the build. Alright, let's kick this off with a level in Artificer. Victor is a master techmaturgist. Artificers have a d8 hit die. Not too thick, but not too weak either. They also have proficiency in light and medium armor, shields, and simple weapons. You also get proficiency in thieves tools, tinkers tools, and one type of artisan's tools. We'll choose smith's tools because of history, especially in the creation of Blitzcrank. Artificers also get two skill proficiencies. We're going to take Arcana and Investigation. Magical Tinkering is an artificer's ability to breathe magical life into an object letting it do a variety of effects like shedding light, emitting a recorded message or an odor, or a static visual effect. Artificers also get spellcasting. You utilize your artisan's tools as a spellcasting focus until you gain your infused items which can be used as your spell focus instead. As always, we'll only be discussing the champion relevant spells. Now normally that makes the spell list short, but Victor actually has a ton of good spells we can use this later. For this level, we have a cantrip and two level one spells. The cantrip is Firebolt. You roll a ranged spell attack and hit the target with a small blast of fire. It deals 1d10 damage, and this spell, like all cantrips, scales with your total character level, not your class level. We'll flavor this as a summoner spell, Ignite. For our first level 1 spell, we'll take Expeditious Retreat. This lets you dash as a bonus action on every one of your turns until this spell ends or your concentration breaks. This is going to be the summoner spell, Ghost. Finally, and I'm sorry because this level 1 really dragged on, we're going to take the shield spell. Shield lets you use your reaction to add plus 5 to your AC until the start of your next turn. This is going to be the shielding portion of Victor's Q ability. Second level artificers gain their artificer infusions. You now have the ability to infuse any non-magical object with one of your specific infusions. A lot of these require attunement, so keep that in mind when choosing them. 
There are a ton of infusions to choose from, so we'll just focus on the victor ones just like we do for spells. First we'll take Mind Sharpener, which allows you to use your reaction to automatically succeed on any concentration check you fail. This will help when it comes to maintaining your ultimate abilities uptime. Next, we'll take Enhanced Arcane Focus. This gives you a plus one bonus to your spell attack rolls and allows your spells to ignore half cover. Once you reach level 10, this bonus increases to plus two. Boots of the Winding Path are the final infusion for this level that we're going to focus on. While wearing these boots, you can teleport up to 15 feet as a bonus action to unoccupied space you can see. The only catch is you have to have occupied that space at some point during the current turn. We can flavor this as a summoner spell Flash. At third level, Artificers choose their specialist form. We're going to go with Artillerist. This unlocks a ton of features, so get ready. First, we gain tool proficiency with Woodcarver's tools. Next, we unlock Artillerist specific spells. The first two are Shield and Thunder Wave. You also learn how to create an Eldritch Cannon, which you can use in a variety of ways. Each of the types represent a different ability or flavoring. The Flamethrower type lets out a 15 foot cone of fire. Creatures need to make a dexterity save or take 2d8 fire damage. We can flavor this as Victor using the Hextech Protobell. The Force Ballista allows you to roll a ranged spell attack. And if it hits the target, it takes 2d8 force damage and is pushed 5 feet away from the cannon. This is one way of using the empowered auto attack provided by Victor's Q. We'll get another one later on, but this will suffice till then. The final option is Protector. It emits a burst of positive energy, granting any creature you choose within 10 feet temporary hit points equal to 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier. We'll flavor this as Locker of the Iron Solari, giving a shield to allies within range. The final feature for this Artificer level is the right tool for the job. This lets you magically create any set of Artisan's tools, which exist until you use this feature again. Level 4 Artificers gain an ability score improvement. We're going to forgo that and take a feat. Warcaster gives a bunch of benefits that improve our playstyle. You have advantage on your concentration checks for maintaining spells. Along with Mind Sharpener, this will make your spells nearly impossible to interrupt. You can perform somatic components while holding a weapon and shield. This will let you wield your staff and a shield, which can also enhance with the Enhanced Defense Infusion. This will give us a plus 3 AC swing in one level. Finally, when a creature provokes an opportunity attack, you can use a reaction to cast a targeted spell at that creature instead of making a melee attack. Now it's time to build our Hex Core. Level 5 Artificers gain Arcane Firearm. Now you can carve special runes into your staff to turn it into your Arcane Firearm. You can use this as your spellcasting focus, and when you channel ability through it, you get to add 1d8 to the spell's damage. The Hex Core. It's alive! It grants Victor an understanding of himself and unlocks some of his abilities. As a result, we're going to take a level in Warlock, specifically the Hexblade Patron. Warlocks also have a d8 hit die, and unfortunately you don't gain any new proficiencies. We'll convert your quarterstaff to your Pact Weapon using the Hex Warrior feature. This lets you use your Charisma modifier instead of Strength for the attack and damage rolls. You also gain Hexblade's Curse. You gain a bonus equal to your proficiency bonus on damage rolls against the cursed target, and your critical hit range expands to include 19 and 20s. If the cursed target dies, you gain HP equal to your Warlock level plus your Charisma mod. It recharges on a short or long rest. We have two important spells we gain this level. First, we have Eldritch Blast, which damage and function-wise is about equal to Firebolt, but next level it upgrades significantly. This will be the best version of our empowered Q auto attack. Next, we have Witch Bolt. This is going to be our version of Chaos Storm. You make a spell attack roll and strike the target with 1d12 lightning damage. On each turn following, you can use your action to immediately hit it with that damage again. This spell requires concentration, which is why we've added so many features to make it hard to crack. Second level Warlocks gain Eldritch Invocations, which empower other Warlock abilities or grant new ones. We'll take Agonizing Blast first. This allows you to add your Charisma modifier to Eldritch Blast. With this, you'll severely outscale the damage you deal with Firebolt, and it'll replace it nearly entirely in your rotation. We'll also give you some additional range with Eldritch Spear. This increases your Eldritch Blast range to 300 feet. Now that we have our Hex Core, our full Q ability, and our ultimate, time to work on our W and E abilities next. To do that, we're going to take a few levels in Wizard. Wizards have a D6 hit die, which will give us a little bit of squish, but it's so worth it. Again, no new proficiencies for this class. The final level 1 wizard feature is Arcane Recovery. This lets you recover a combination of spell number slots equal to half your wizard level. Second level wizards choose their Arcane Tradition. We'll choose Graviturgy Magic, which will give us access to Dunamancy spells. This also grants you the Adjust Gravity feature. 
As an action, you can choose any object or creature size larger or smaller. The weight is either halved or doubled for an entire minute. Having the weight grants 10 additional movement speed, doubles its jump range, and its strength checks are in saving throws are rolled at disadvantage. Doubling the weight, your movement speed is reduced by 10, and strength checks and saves are rolled with advantage. Level 3 wizards gain 2 level 2 spell slots. We'll grab both our W and E abilities here. For gravity field, we'll use the spell Magnify Gravity. The gravity in a 10 foot radius sphere is increased. Each creature in the sphere has to make a constitution saving throw or take 2d8 force damage and has its speed halved until the end of the next turn. For death ray, we'll use Agonizer's Scorcher. A line of fire, 30 feet long and 5 feet wide, emanates in the direction you choose. Each creature in the line has to make a deck save or take 3d8 fire damage. Alright, now that we've gotten all of our spells and abilities, time to round them out and improve them. Six level artificers gain tool expertise, which doubles your proficiency bonus on any ability check that uses said tools. At level 7, artificers gain Flash of Genius, which lets you give yourself or any creature within 30 feet you can see your intelligence modifier to add to their roll. You can use this feature as many times as your intelligence modifier. Level 8 artificers get an ability score improvement. We'll bump our intelligence 2 points to increase our spell DC and improve our other abilities. Ninth level artificers gain Explosive Cannon. This increases your cannon's damage roll by 1d8. You can also detonate your cannon. This forces all creatures within 20 feet of it to make a deck save or take 3d8 force damage. At level 10, artificers learn Magic Item Adept. You can now attune to 4 items, and if you craft a common or uncommon magic item, it only takes a quarter of the time and costs half as much. Level 11 artificers get Spell Storing Item. You can touch any item you can use as a spell focus and store either a first or second level spell that only requires an action to cast. Anyone wielding the object can take their action to cast the stored spell a number of times equal to two times your intelligence modifier. Twelfth level artificers gain an ability score improvement again. We'll max out our intelligence here using both points. At level 13, artificers normally gain a bonus to their proficiency, but since we've multi-classed, this won't happen here. Level 14 Artificers learn Magic Item Savant. You can attune up to 5 items now, and now you can ignore any class, race, spell, or level requirements on them. Our final level in Artificer gives us Fortified Position. This improves your cannon to generate a shimmering magical field that grants half cover to your allies. You can also have 2 Eldritch Cannons now. Alright, now that we've completed the build, let's see how we did. First, the good. We covered all of Victor's abilities. Between his spells and mechanical augmentations, this Victor build is fully realized. This build also has a relatively high AC through a shield, your Warforged features, and several Artificer infusions. You're also a support specialist, able to provide a variety of improvements to your allies through special features. Now for the bad. Although you do have high AC, you're still pretty squishy at only 140 HP. You also only learn spells up to a 4th level, so some of the high damage game changing spells are out of your reach. Finally, your multiple multi-classings pulled you out of several abilities that are nice features, but I think it was worth it to fulfill the fantasy. So what did you think? Are there changes you'd make to the build? If so, comment below and let us know. I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below if you'd like to view the character sheet digitally, as well as an Amazon link to the books used in this build if you want to buy them. If you enjoy this type of content, please like, share, and subscribe, then leave a comment on which champion you'd like us to take on next. We plan on churning out one league champion build every two weeks. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift, or in the Forgotten Realms.